Well, hey guys, did you know thin brows are back in style yet again? That's right, they are back. Those of us with thicker brows are going, oh no, here they are again. And those of you with thinner brows are probably like, what? I just spent the last, I don't know, 10 years trying to make my brows fuller, getting microblading, tattooing, buying all of these serums, what have you, and now you're saying that the over tweeze look is back in fashion? Oh, that's right. If you are over the age of 50, why don't you drop a comment below and let us all know in your lifetime, how many times have thin eyebrows come into favor only to disappear in popularity again? Watch this video because I'm going to go over why it is that you should be conservative, conscientious about your eyebrow grooming habits and not go over plucking, tweezing. I always wanna call this feathering, threading. Don't ask me why I wanna say feathering, threading your eyebrows. I have a few videos on this channel about eyebrows, causes of thinning brows, using Rogaine for brow growth. So check those out if that is of interest to you. Brows are really important for facial recognition. They're a key aspect of how people recognize you. And they also perform a functional role in keeping sweat out of your eyes and also skincare products out of your eyes. Brow hairs grow in a cyclical fashion, just like the hairs on your head. There's the antigen phase, which is the growing phase of the hair cycle. Then there's catagen, which is the involution stage. And then there is telogen, which is the resting phase. Now, in contrast to the hairs on your head, the duration of antigen, the growing phase, is significantly shorter for your brows in comparison to the hairs on your head, which is a good thing because the duration of antigen dictates hair length. And so if the antigen phase was as long for your brows, you'd have eyebrows like down to your belly button and that would not be a good thing. As a matter of fact, that is one issue that you can run into if you get an eyebrow transplant, which by the way, I have a video on eyebrow transplants. Also in contrast to the hairs on your head, the hairs in the brow area, a significantly greater proportion of them are in the resting phase, the telogen phase. About 10% of the hairs on your head are in the resting phase. However, 90% of the hairs in your brow area are in that resting phase. There are actually three different types of hair that make up your eyebrows. You've got coarse terminal hair, which is the long black or brown or blonde hair that's thick. Then you've got vellus hairs, which are like peach fuzz. And you also have lightly colored thicker hairs, some Somewhere in between a terminal hair and a vellus hair. All three of those types are what make up your brows and kind of give them depth, dimension. It's common practice for people to try and groom their brows by plucking with tweezers. You actually can cause damage to the hair follicle that leads to a scar and you can end up losing your brows. So when the pendulum swings back in favor of thicker brows, you're gonna possibly have permanent loss of the, those brow hairs. So be really strategic and careful. I wouldn't go tweezing the whole area. It is definitely a real thing people struggle with, having over tweezed their brows in an earlier phase of their life. And then when the thick brow thing comes back into fashion, well, then they're, you know, Googling microblading, eyebrow tattooing, and, you know, trying to do more eyebrow makeup to get them to look fuller. So it's definitely something that happens to a lot of people. Oddly enough for me, I have been tweezing the brow hairs between my eyebrows, what seems like my entire life, those bad boys never, ever, ever seem to scar down, but this certainly can happen to the brow hairs for sure, and you can be left with permanent thinning brows. So be really careful. You know, the hair follicle it, in the brow area, it's sensitive to that trauma, and that can lead to scarring, contribute to thinning. For the same reason, some people have the nervous uh, habit of pulling out their eyebrow hairs. It's called trichotillomania. It actually can happen for hair on other body sites, including the scalp. It's, it can be associated with anxiety, other mental health disorders, uh, but some people just do it absent-mindedly. Like I had a friend who would um, absent-mindedly pull at her brows when she was studying and only on the right side. So she had very thin, a very thin right brow that she would have to pencil in because she had a nervous habit of doing that when she was studying. I've had other friends do the same thing for their eyelashes. Trust me, the pendulum will swing back in favor of thicker brows eventually. All it takes is an award ceremony and a celebrity. That's all it takes for things to completely change in the other direction. Or like a hit movie with a leading actress with brows that 
contradict the current trend. So a question I get a fair amount is, is it okay to shave your brows off and pencil them in? A lot of makeup people do this. Um, they shave their eyebrows off. Like, is that safe? Oddly enough, I remember being taught like in medical school um, or reading somewhere along the lines, like in a textbook, that you should never interfere with the brow hairs, that they would never grow back from like shaving them. And that's actually not true. That has been debunked in actual papers that you can find on PubMed. Uh, the eyebrows do grow back after shaving. Now, when you shave, you're gonna shave the hair, it's gonna have a blunt cut, as opposed to tweezing, uh, you're pulling the hair out down closer. So when the hair grows back from tweezing, plucking, or, God, why do I keep wanting to call it feathering? Threading, the hair will grow back in a more natural texture, but with shaving, you will have that blunt cut. So as it's growing in, you'll have kind of stubble in that area. And I wanna reiterate to you guys that eyebrow growth is significantly slower than hair growth on the rest of your head. It'll take about six months for the brows to go back to, you know, their, to regrow. The pros of shaving your brows are that eventually they will grow back. It's not gonna alter the shape of the brows. They'll grow back in the same pattern. So that's okay from that standpoint. But the cons are, it's gonna take a while for them to grow back. So if you're completely unhappy, you're gonna to have to go you know, six months of penciling your brows in. The other con is that as they grow back, it's gonna be stubbly in the beginning. So you may not appreciate that texture of the brows. And the other con is that, again, brows are important for keeping sweat out of your eyes. So this might be something that you have more struggles with if you do it, say, in the midst of a Houston summer where you're gonna be sweating a lot on a daily basis, par for the course here, you may wanna have your actual brows there keeping that sweat out of your eyes. It is my observation, although this is not proven by science, but it is just my observation. I think that the hairs, the brow hairs, are a lot more sensitive for some people to the trauma of tweezing or you know plucking than hairs on other body sites because a lot of people pluck other body site hairs and don't run into this issue or if they do it's just not something they notice like some people pluck like the hairs on their chin those bad boys never seem to be traumatized it could just be you know the sh the way the follicle is oriented relative to the surface of the skin and the brow area the close proximity to the bone the thinner skin in that area all of these things could possibly be a reason for for that and just age-related thinning of the brows happens alongside you know this practice and the fact that brow hairs are much slower to much slower to regrow. And the other possible reason is that in contrast to hairs on your head, the hair growth cycle in the brows is not under the influence of androgen hormones. The hairs on your head, they are sensitive to hormones. That is why when you stop birth control pills or you, you know, deliver a baby, you three months later, you will experience telogen effluvium. But that doesn't really impact the brows due to that change in hormonal influence from androgen hormones. But the brow area is seems to be sensitive to other hormones like thyroid hormones. People with hypothyroidism, they have thinning of the lateral brow likely because of influences of thyroid hormone to brow growth. But um, all that to say, I think that is one reason why perhaps the follicle is just not as hardy as those you know, random hairs that you would love to tweeze to the point of scarring so they never come back. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's definitely the case. Likewise, the bikini area is one of those areas where people go for waxes regularly to remove that hair. I have never ever seen anyone have bikini hair get thin with time from waxing. I have never observed that. It's not been reported in the medical literature. The only way to thin that out is to use laser therapy. Um, so why it is that the brow area in particular seems so stinking sensitive to the trauma of plucking, tweezing, pulling is beyond me, but I think it has something to do with perhaps hormones and maybe just the overall anatomy. 
Now all that to say, if you do pull your hair, eventually it can scar down and lead to bald patches or patches of thinning, permanent thinning on the scalp. It's more common in this area, it's called traction alopecia. And some people who develop traction alopecia from wearing tight hairstyles, if they continue to wear those tight hairstyles, it can actually end up long-term causing some scarring of those follicles with permanent thinning in that area. That's why we recommend, you know, to abandon relying solely on those tight hairstyles to take a break from them. Same thing with the hair extensions that put a lot of traction on the hair shaft and pull. So it's not like the scalp is bulletproof from the effects of pulling, tweezing, or traction for sure, but it does seem as though the brows are exquisitely sensitive, whereas other body hairs are impervious. <laughs> I know so many women who over tweezed their brows in the 90s, that was a thing to do. And as a result, in like the 2010 time when the thick brows came back, they were rushing out, you know, to do microblading and all of those things. And you know, now, now they've got the microblading and <laughs> thin brows are back in style. Please don't, you know, go all in on this tr eyebrow trend. Try and approach it more conservatively. I'm not suggesting you shave your brows off and pencil them in, but I do think that approach would avoid the risk of permanently thinning the brows for you. Uh, although again, with the caveats that you're gonna have to deal with no brows, no actual brow hairs for a time. Eyebrows are a huge, huge industry. Have you noticed that? And it seems as though it's grown and grown and grown. Like the beauty industry creates these problems so that they can develop solutions to then sell us. I mean, your brows were never a problem. Your brows are perfectly fine. And if you have lost your brows due to an underlying medical condition, obviously that is a different situation. And again, I've got videos talking about um, approaches to restoring the brows and people who have lost them due to medical conditions. But for everyday people who don't have any underlying medical issue causing thinning of the brows, your brows are wonderful, they're beautiful, and the beauty industry just decides that something is in. They create these products that make, that we feel like we have to buy because we're not, you know, aligned with whatever the current day trend of brow shape or whatever it is. There are brow kits, brow serums, microblading, brow tattooing. Chrissy Teigen got her brow transplant. You know, I would not be surprised if, if, if you know, 10 or 15 years from now, we don't see, you know, brow extensions, brow toupees even. Um, I'm actually surprised that we don't have more like Ad adhesive based brow ad adornments like with lash extensions. I I'm surprised we don't see that. If that were ever a thing, you know, then we'd have a rise probably in contact dermatitis to the adhesive. See, I'm predicting problems that are gonna come eventually down the pipeline. Aside from lat bimatoprost, AKA Latisse, or even Minoxidil, the brow serums uh, that they're selling you know, not rooted in science, no pun intended. Uh, but dang, they sure are making a killing off of those things. It's easy for me to sit here on camera and tell you guys to just be happy with your eyebrows, but I know that's not realistic. You know, people, people like changing up their eyebrows too as a form of self-expression. I totally relate to that. I would just encourage you to be conservative with the plucking approach. Don't make the same mistakes that women have been making with their brows for decades <laughs> and over tweezing them. Let me know in the comments if you fell victim the last time this was popular to over tweezing your brows. And in the description box, I'm going to link my video on brow transplant. I'm also gonna link my video on thinning brows. So check those out. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.